everybody and welcome to the Manitoba High School Athletic Association 4A Varsity Girls Volleyball Finals coming to you from Sturgeon Heights Collegiate in St. James School Division in Winnipeg, Manitoba. We are pleased to be with you to bring this live volleyball action at the conclusion of what has been a, a different year for these high school athletes. I'm Grant McManus. I'll bring you the play-by-play -play and joining me with color and insights into the game is Mr. Cam Johnson. Good evening, Cam. Hi, Grant. Great to be here and uh, great to be back in a gym for a provincial championship. Absolutely. So for those of you that uh, couldn't join us, we're hoping that we'll do our very best to uh, bring you the, uh, the excitement of this uh, championship final that these girls have been working so forward to, not just this season, but over the last two years as the uh, seasons were interrupted last year. Absolutely, it's uh, it's been a, a, a difficult and challenging time for uh, for everybody. So sport is uh, one thing to, that we're excited to have back here. And uh, you know, there's no fans in the stands uh, here, and that's nope. uh, that's unfortunate. But it's it's the times that we're in. But for these athletes uh, who are on the court, you know, it's still a, a huge night uh, for them for sure. And playing in the final, as you saw in the intros on the opening video, we have the number four ranked J.H. Bruns Broncos playing against the St. Mary's Academy coming in at number six. J.H. Bruns defeated in the uh, semifinal today, three to one against the uh, Vincent Massey Trojans who came in ranked number one. And St. Mary's comes to you ranked uh, number six, having defeated, um, who did they defeat in the, uh, oh, in the Sturgeon Heights. Sturgeon Heights, in that's right. In the uh, semis uh, in a five set match. So. Uh, again, we are very much looking forward to bringing you the play-by-play. -play. Uh, the proud sponsors of this championship are Boston Pizza. They've been with us for over 20 years, so we would like to thank them for their continued sponsorship. And if you have a little bit of a hankering for some to eat, we'd uh, encourage you to you know, dial up your local Boston Pizza and have some food delivered to you can take in these match. We are going to turn it over to the house announcer here in just a very few seconds, Mr. Andre Helkowitz, who is going to bring you uh, the greetings and opening remarks and team introductions. Again, pleased to be part of the LRSD.TV crew. Uh, they've been working, oh, and here we go. <laughs> Well, we know that it's working. Earlier in the day, there was no Canada, but the teams uh, decided to take it upon themselves and uh, and give us a rendition themselves. So. Yes, credit to the varsity boys from yep. uh, Westgate and uh, Steinbach. Steinbach for stepping up and uh, a little a cappella, O Canada. They so. did just fine. That's they right. Did. They did. It seems like they got that technical part uh, figured out, though, for the finals here tonight. So Yeah. the girls final of the Boston Pizza 4A Volleyball Championships. This battle for the girls title is between the number sixth ranked St. Mary's Flames and the number fourth ranked J.H. Bruns Broncos. Please rise for the playing of O Canada.
quote is, the land on which we gather is Treaty 1 territory and the traditional territory of, of the Anishinaabe, Inevik, and Dakota peoples and homeland of the Métis Nation. With this acknowledgement, we demonstrate respect for Indigenous peoples and communities and we celebrate a renewed relationship with one another moving forward. Now let's meet the teams. The lineup for the number six seed and guests on the scoreboard, St. Mary's Flames. Number 10, Samantha Dreger. Number 19, Julia Ethans. Number two, Ariana Fulcher. Number 14, Kennedy Green. Number 15, T Tess McCurdy. Number 11, Shelby Mead. Number 18, Bakvina Sanhu. And now the starting lineup for the Flames. Number 17, Katja Cisneros. Number 20, Megan Hooper. Number 23, Ava Scromita. Number 12, Alina Stevens. Number 6, Taya Tyndall. Number 8, Lauren Viss. And number 9, Ellie Wood. Assistant coach Scott Kosky, head coach Marshall Lawrence. And now the home team on the scoreboard, the number fourth seed, JH Bruns Broncos. Let's meet the team. Number 16, Kaylee Lane. Number 19, Kate Povkovic. And now the starting lineup for the Broncos, number nine, Maya Carante. Number 13, Jenna Dick. Number six, Maddie Gordon. Number 17, Kara Lees Lowen. Number 24, Julian Polkovic. Number 25, Rhea Surinks. And number three, Brenna Thiessen. Assistant coaches, Kyra Dick, Summer Sabarin, Ali Moffat, and head coach, Mr. Chris Funk. Officials for this match, line judges, Kyle Turcott and Dave Javonin. Second referee, Mr. Mitch Davidson. And head official, Cade Kaltenteller. Good luck, ladies. Folks, we're just moments away from the opening serve of this year's Varsity Girls 4A Volleyball Championship brought to you by Boston Pizza here at Sturgeon Creek High School and St. James School Division. And as you heard the starting lineups, the coaches for the St. Mary's Flames is Mr. Marshall Lawrence and the head coach for the J.H. Bruns Broncos, Chris Funk. The number four ranked Broncos come in with a season record overall of 22 and 7. St. Mary's comes in with an overall record of 23 and 11. So we should be in for a, a well-matched final here. Uh, Cam? Yeah, for sure. We saw the, the final four games this, this morning, which is a little different to be having the semis and the final on the same day. But we watched uh, both of these teams play, and uh, the ball was definitely kept off the ground. Uh, good defense, and uh, as you'll see, soon see uh, a lot of firepower uh, on both sides of the net as well. Yeah, and uh, in terms of firepower, we've got the number one uh, player in the province, uh, number 25 out of J.H. Bruns. Uh, Rhea Cernix, who we understand has made a commitment to playing next year at the University of Manitoba. So she's got that out of the way and uh, can <laughs> focus on uh, tonight's championship. St. Mary's comes out with a tough serve right off the hop and uh, they're up on nothing. Back on the service line, that's number nine, Ella Wood, the setter. That was one of the things that we saw during the day here too, was really aggressive serving from uh, all of the teams and that's the way it starts here tonight. Yeah. Nice pass. Surex gets up on a great set from. Yeah, and that's that's uh, her first first hit. We talked about uh, uh, her as being a, a dominant force uh, offensively, and there we see uh, at the first opportunity a big a big hit uh, right to the middle of the court to start it yeah. off for uh, J.H. Bruns. 
That's Jillian Pokovic at the service line for J.H. Bruns. Cross court shot there by number 12. That's Elena Stevens for the Flames. Yeah, we'll see how long it takes the, takes the girls here to uh, settle into a game, get the rhythm here, but uh, we're off to a good start. Yep. Stevens earning yourself a serve. Yes. A lot of system ball there, but Zurich's put some good pace on it. Spermato with the big in the back row for the Flames. Back up to Cernix. Great block. A little bing, bang, bong there, but the ball still in play. Cross court shot there by Cisneros. Oh, we saw a couple things in that, well, more than a couple things yeah. in, that, in that rally. Uh, some good defensive plays and second efforts. And uh, as we talked about right off the hall, the right off the hop here, uh, Strings with a uh, line shot, uh, inside out cross court, so lots of stuff right there. Good ball out there to number eight. That is Lauren Viss. Lauren, Lauren Viss putting the ball away down the line. Yeah, we saw her hit uh, hit a lot this morning as well, mm -hmm. and that uh, a good line shot for Sido. Back on the service line is Megan Hooper with the ace. Yeah, any of those serves that, that are hitting in that back uh, back part of the court, close to the line, is exactly where you want to get them out of system. Shortens that up a little bit. Deep line shot there by Owen for the sixth four. That's going to put Rhea Cernix back on the service line, I believe. She comes hard down the sixth position. Out of the back row, that's Lowen. Or Stevens, pardon me. Nice block yep. outside there. Big, big swing by Dick, but uh, great defensive block there by the front row of the wing. Yeah, Cisneros had, uh, went up really solid, no drift at all, and uh, was able to put up a, a pretty sizable block. She's now back on the service line. Serves cross court to number one. It's an aggressive serve, and uh, coming from position one over to the receptions team's position one with a lot of velocity there. And Katya Cisneros is on the service line, and she has committed to go to the University of Winnipeg Western program next year. So congratulations to her on that decision. Which is part of the exciting part of, of watching these games and these finals is seeing uh, the beginning stages of these uh, university volleyball careers. Absolutely. Well, Gordon with a little smile there. I think she might have mishit that one and uh, probably yeah. looking forward to getting <laughs> the next chance at the service line. Yeah. St. Mary's up 7-4. Great float serve there. Good dig by the libero from Bruns. Spermetta with a great cross body dig as well. Extended rally here, back court to Cernic. Good dig. Now we're gonna go back court to Cisneros into the net. Our first extended rally of the match. And the back row attack from both sides, uh, yeah. from both teams out of the pipe position. So back row coming out of the middle there and uh, a good, good attack option when you can have some that fourth attacker. And pardon me, it is uh, five serving seven. Bruns is the guest on the score clock. Tight ball there, going to get called on the net. We talked a lot about uh, Syrinx right off, uh, right off the hop as she was starting the front row there, but there we have a look at uh, um, Jenna Dick, I believe, who is hitting on left side, who yeah. also brings a lot of power to the Bruns attack. That's an off-beat shot there by Alina Stevens. Alina Stevens. Yeah, so she's shown uh, some, a line shot, and like you said, a little bit of off-speed there, and uh, that's what she needs to do to get the service back to her team. And this is Taya Tyndall on the serve. 
Good aggressive serve, just out, but uh, I don't think the coaches and staff will be too disappointed in that. No, we they risk reward with the serve, and yeah, you know, we at least the made the team make a decision on it. Yeah, we were talking to the, both coaches earlier, and that was one thing they said is the need to, to serve tough. Yeah. Which comes with the odd miss serve. <laughs> yeah. But both teams and the are odd doing back it. to back. So, yeah. anyways, we'll get the uh, the kinks worked out. The girls did have a match earlier today, but this is a provincial final, so yeah. Cernich with the cross court, Scrimita with the dig. Nice one on one there by Cisneros and Cernich. Yeah, and sometimes you know you, uh, one team will make an error or you know be a missed assignment or something like that and a point scored and other times like that last rally we saw it's just good execution nice sets good attacks libero makes a nice dig and uh, and somebody wins at the net but it's a good volleyball play yeah. julian pokovic back on service line now comes outside to this narrow so it puts the ball away good back cross into the front row yeah good cross court shot there Pokovic might have been, uh, I think, expecting the big shot straight down, mm -hmm. and uh, the ball ended up being more of a perimeter shot and snuck by her. Alina Stevens with the serve, Cernix with the light, great serve, serve a <laughs> Nice job by Cisneros in the middle. That's uh, Megan Hooper with yeah. the block on Cernix. There's his narrows with the back up set. She's certainly showing your repertoire of uh, skills moving the ball around the court, Cam. Yeah, absolutely. That uh, the last time that uh, uh, you know she got blocked outside, this time decided to do a little bit more of a cut shot cross court. Tight ball by Scrimetta to for the set of the pass on that one. But they end up with uh, the point nonetheless. Yeah. Back on the service line, I believe that is Megan Hooper. So the Flames up 12, serving nine. Smart play there. Yeah. Not the uh, ideal set that you wanted, but makes the most of it and tips over the block for uh, for a point and gets defense caught a little flat-footed. Good aggressive serve. It's going to be taking the pass off of that. Just Just not sure if she intended to pull the string on that one, but the result is what she was looking for. So Yeah, she came a uh, hard approach there yeah. and was able to make enough contact to uh, get the point. So Katja Cisneros back to serve, 13-11. Great aggressive serve there. Runs under pressure, they have to make a free ball. Good beat by Cernix, he's going to get the ball back in the pipe. Tough call there for uh, Ella Wood, ball coming back over her shoulder from the back row. and uh, Yeah, that is a tough angle when you're running into the net, you got to look over your shoulder like you say there. But good systematic volleyball on both sides yeah. here. Uh, players in the right defensive positions and the ball's uh, coming off the floor. Little bounce off the top of the tape and out of bounds. So 14-12, St. Mary's up in this first set of the Varsity Girls Boston Pizza 4A Volleyball Championships coming to you from Sturgeon Heights High School on LRSD.TV. Back to serve is Ella Wood. Nope, problem wrong side there. Yep. Grant, that's uh, <laughs> Carolee's loan. Lone. The fortunate thing is they don't change the size of the net, so uh, by the next set, I should have it ironed out, Cam. <laughs> Great pipe ball there to Cernix. We've seen that uh, throughout the day. Yeah, Not only to her, but uh, to... Yeah, Jenna Dick was hitting Jenna it as Dick well. As well. Yep. And I mean, what it does is it, it, it forces the other team's blockers to respect another option other yeah. than just your normal right side, middle, uh, and, and back set. 
Nice pass there. Off the block. Nice score for Tisdall. Tyndall. Tyndall, yeah. Yeah, she did a good job finding the block, inside out shot, and uh, got her point. Taya Tyndall on the service line. Nice shot there by Carolee's Lowen. Or sorry, no, that's incorrect. That was, I think that was Jenna Dick. That one. Three ball over to the Broncos. Goes outside Cernix. Good dig there by the Barrel Stremetta. Yeah, that was a great dig from another yeah. hard cross-court shot. And, uh, you know, you would think that these teams have been playing each other all year and they know each other inside and mm -hmm. out, but it's really not the case. They have not seen each other quite to the no, same degree. not the same number of matches this year with uh, the restrictions and fewer tournaments. So lots of viewing of their own teams and their own conferences, but not so much across conferences. Yeah. Nice cross, a uh, little 32 or yeah. shot there by uh, Julian Pokovic. Skirmeda is all over the place for St. Yes. Mary's right now. She's doing a great job. She's racking up a good uh, in the uh, dig column in yeah. terms of stats here. So far, both teams have been serving very aggressively. Flat, no spin serves. Close to the net, so not a lot of time to react. And uh, Coach Funk for the Jays Friends Broncos has uh, called a timeout and scored 18-15 here in the first set. So we have our camera crew from LRSD TV going into the timeout, so we'll turn it over to them. Just clean up the service, clean up the service errors. That's it. Okay? We, wanna, we just don't want to give them the ball back, right? Like I said, easy, 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 easy points for us. We can serve tough, right? Can you push tough? Okay? That's it, keep swinging, keep swinging away, that's it. Okay, all right, all right, that's all I got to say. You guys are doing a great job out there. Okay, good job, okay, okay. Correct some space, right? You got to respect the middle first and then close to the outside, right? I think she's trying to set the ball inside. On the, audio. the coaches are mic'd up. Uh, I'm not all that good at lip service, uh, lip reading, anyways. But certainly not now with mass on cam. So I'm not sure how you're. Uh... It makes it a lot tougher. <laughs> there's no question. But I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure the term the timeouts went a lot about uh, resetting, refocusing, getting back to the basics. Do yeah, your do your feet, job. Call the ball. Yeah. 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 Pass and serve. Ella Wood back on the service line. Again, a uh, little favorable bounce off the tape. This is a big point exchange here, so we've got uh, the first substitute for Bruns. We have number 19, that's Ricky Lee Nakins coming in for uh, Carolee's Lowen, the setter. So again, hard aggressive serve down that seam, making it uh, decision making time. And Ball hits the floor, so Coach Funk takes a second timeout. Yeah, they're going to want to. Uh, they're going to definitely want to come out uh, with this next point, obviously. But uh, this is, you know, in the rally point yeah. uh, world 2016 or 2115, it's a big, uh, a big difference and a much bigger uh, hill yeah. to climb. Good. Yeah. Okay, let's clean this up here, guys. Okay. And it uh, looks like we are in the Coach Funk. Please go back in for Kate on this one. Okay. Okay, and you're going to set. Okay, let's go here, guys. Yeah. So you could hear into the last few words of the Bruns uh, mm -hmm. timeout there, but they've taken their setter out, uh, or we're talking about that. They may have changed their mind on it. Yeah, I think she's going to sub back in. So that's uh, Carolee's coming back in. Ella Wood with the serve. 
As you see, that timeout seemed to serve its purpose. Mm. Uh, <laughs> yep. Yeah, they got what they wanted there, yeah. so now they'll have to uh, defend for a couple points here to mm -hmm. apply a little bit of pressure uh, on the St. Mary's side of things. Pokovic back on the service line. Runs with three hitters up front. Oh, a little... Uh, I think I called on a, on a carry ball there, but uh, <laughs> that would have been a creative way to, yes. to come over, which is and legal. Absolutely. It, uh, she's having a little chuckle. She was, I think, as surprised as anybody in there. But, uh, yeah, it was a good strike off the left foot as well. So Good shot between the two blockers there by yeah, Cisneros. Cisneros. Got the attack that she wanted there. That's a good side out off of a couple of really tough serves, too. Yeah. Vakovic with a tough... A tough serve, but they handled it well and were able to side out to put them up 21-17. Elena Stevens back on the service line. A little change of pace again. I'm not sure if that was uh, by design, but it certainly uh, the Brun service he was a little. Yeah, well, anytime you serve over to right now. anytime you serve over to that to the that side of the court, position one or mix it up to go to two, it's a lot harder to receive that pass for the setter as well. So it's it's a good it's yeah. a good move. And then trying to keep that uh, hitter contained. Well, I think that's that's the intent, right? Yeah. Is to push that hitter as deep as you can. But Swings had another idea about that one. <laughs> Pass yeah. and uh, swung out and found her shot. Yeah. Yeah, we've seen her bounce a few balls, uh, you know, relatively close to the net. She does uh, elevate, as they say. Mm -hmm. Again, there's that uh, hard cross court. A little out of system ball, but she manages to put it in. Great ball, good dig by Scametta. Good communication there by the St. Mary's setter. And she had the ball come in. Again, money balls for Syrinx, the setter. Just put them in a good spot for her to get up and get a swing on. So uh, Bruns is battling back. They're not going to uh, lay down and let this one get out of hand. It's 22-19. Uh, Gained a little bit of momentum back, and that's even right, if they aren't right. successful, that's a key part yeah. is to keep plugging away and hopefully get a little momentum going into that next set if you're not successful in this one. Yeah, well, for cheat, sure. Cheat, kind of lean, so. cheat a little bit then. Cheat a little bit. Middle, cheat a bit. Okay? Sit and cross, like don't. Just, hey, okay? Up. Hands up. Occupy some space with the hands. All you gotta do is touch it, right? All you gotta do is slow it down. Okay? All right, hey, you're doing a great job. Just listen, let them catch up. Okay, serve, receive, serve, receive to us, right? Let's get the first kill, get the first kill here. Let's go. Three, two, one. It's a tough job, like you're ta uh, talking about slowing down the big attack uh, from Bruns. And, uh, but, you know, like it, it, it is just a question of touching the ball. Sometimes you don't need to have the big block for a point as much as it is to be able to slow it down and then your team defense bring it back up in transition. Another good, great serve there by Mia Ferrante. Again, hitting that seam between uh, that one-two spot. Yeah, it's a conflict zone, and it put, make, yeah. forces the everybody to try and figure out who's going to play the ball and how we're going to transition out of this. And when it does get to the setter, it's the toughest angle too. Scametta with a good pass there. Nice cross shot, cross court shot by Cisneros. To go up 23-20. Back into the front row. That's number six, Taya Tyndall. Back on the service line now for the Flames. That's Megan Hooper. So some of the other uh, COVID differences. There are no no three ball system. So yeah. And the ball rolls out of the gym into the <laughs> foyer. The players got to go run over and get it. So that's what we're doing now. Yeah. But it's made its way back. And there'll be some strategic pacing depending on uh, where you're at in the game as to how uh, quickly you get to the ball to get yeah. it back into play. Yeah. The unofficial timeout. Yeah. A little miscommunication there, I think, on uh, on where the set was going to go. Puts us at 24 or 20 now, possible uh, set point here. Yeah. Cooper with the serve. Ball comes back to Syrinx. Off the hands by the middle blocker. There we go, still alive at 24-21. 20, yeah. 
Swings back to serve, and she has uh, got a couple of direct, or already a direct point off of serve too, so we'll see what she can do here. Little combination there. Rometa digging some great balls tonight. Oh, nice pancake. Great effort overall by Brun's defense, but 25-21 uh, goes to St. Mary's in this first set of the 4A Girls Boston Pizza Volleyball Championships. Boston Pizza, the perfect place for a drink, or the new pickle pizza. Across from this guy, who's getting his fill of some classic cactus cut nachos. Next to some hockey fans that just saw a nasty OT winner. Boston Pizza, enjoy some, what? Look at that guy. Just having a soak, eh? Eh, you do you. Enjoy some old fall favorites and some new ones, however you like, at Boston Pizza. All right, welcome back, and uh, we're just about ready to get ready for the second set. And uh, before the players are back on the floor, we're just going to bring to you the coaches poll top 10 student athlete players this year. Number one is Rhea Cernix, who you're seeing here uh, in front of you tonight, 25 from J.H. Bruns. Number two is Natalie Lemoyne Sells from College on Sauve. Number three, Sarah McClement from Vincent Massey Collegiate. Number four, Nicole Hillebrand from Steinbach Regional. Number five, uh, Kaya Duick from Vincent Massey Collegiate. Number six, Olivia Dow from Sturgeon Heights. Number seven, Katja Cisneros from St. Mary's in the match in front of you here tonight. Number eight, Brooke Duncalf from Sturgeon Heights. Number nine, Jada uh, Summerhalder from Dakota Collegiate. And number 10, ranked player, Monique Rohrer from Vincent Massey mm -hmm. Collegiate. And honorable mentions go to Ava Scromida from St. Mary's, the libero tonight. Grace Vallas from Miles McDonnell, Lauren Viz from St. Mary's, Lauren Ramsey from Elton Collegiate, and Taya Tyndall from St. Mary's. So congratulations to those top 10 in the honorable mentions for all their hard work and commitment to be recognized as this year's top 10 in honorable mentions. Yeah, and we hope that you're enjoying the broadcast here. And not only do we bring events like this, we also broadcast the Winnipeg High School Football Championships, 4A Basketball Provincials, Handball, and of course, so many other great events as well. So you can check out the website for all the information at www.lrsd.tv. It's LRSD TV connecting the community. And we have for J.H. Brun starting the second set on the service line. We have Jenna Dick. And we're underway. Good pass by Cisnero. She's going to get the, it's going to go to Stevens on the back. A little tight set there. So we've got a free ball. See if they can make use of it. Good hustle inside there by Cisneros to go off the hands and score. Yeah, good adjustment. A little bit more inside, tighter set, but yep. doesn't uh, slow her down at all. So uh, first point going to St. Mary's. And Stevens back to serve now. Well, nice shot there out of the back row. Jenna Dick, we've talked about the, uh, for hitting the pipe, uh, the back row option there, and there we saw it on display. So 1-1 one, one now with Pakovic back to serve. Oh, 
Well, and that was a good serve. Yep. You could tell right off of her hand there was that ball did not rotate at all. No. Nope. So it's like a, it's trying to serve receive an oopy ball there, and uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, good serve put him up to the Broncos up two one. Yeah, she's going to get called for a service error. Her toe was on the uh, end line as she took off. Yeah. It would have been okay if she had landed on the line, taking off from outside the court, but her foot was actually in contact with the line before she made contact with the ball. Yeah, and uh, the final being uh, the final, we have lines people there, so yes. you're not going to squeak away with that. No. Three ball, see if Bruns can take advantage here. All the way up to Cernix. Good set of hands on that by the blockers from St. Mary's. Great line shot there by number eight, uh, Lauren Biss. Very sizable block out there. And Cernix, that's a big battle at the net right yeah. now. And you saw Cisneros and uh, I believe it was Tyndall forming that block. Uh, Hooper got a little handcuffed on that one, was running in for, uh, for I think, a tip or a roll yeah. and ended up being a little bit deeper there. Mm -hmm. So the other thing with LRSD.TV, um, you can appreciate, I hope, as you're viewing from home, the, the different angles and the highlight packages. So, um, you know, we've got three... Fix cameras up here on the mezzanine at uh, Sturgeon Heights, and there's two floor cameras, so we've got uh, lots of coverage. The coaches are mic'd up, uh, replay packages, so it's a, it's a first-rate uh, broadcast, and the work that they do with the broadcast media course at ATC under the guidance of Ken Plaintick. So it's always a pleasure to be involved. I was just reminiscing earlier with uh, Ken years ago when we did the first broadcast at Glenmore. The first semester, they had three students. Mm -hmm. They were literally unpacking the new gear uh, as we were getting ready for the broadcast. Lots of fun. Yeah, they've come a long way with this yeah. uh, this broadcast for sure, and especially in times like we're in, yeah. having this kind of service is great. And I know, yeah, I know the the parents and uh, you know, reading stuff on social media and then talking to parents in the community were super pleased with uh, the number of games that got streamed uh, in conference play. Um, you know, because spectators weren't allowed, and I know also in St. James uh, and across other conferences, the streaming. So we'd like to thank all those divisional people that were responsible for the streaming in all of those locales because, uh, you know, it gave parents and family and friends uh, an opportunity to view the games even though they couldn't be in the building necessarily. Yeah, so. and see plays like that, right, coming yeah. out of the back row and uh, a, big, a big pipe uh, shot, a nice uh, volleyball play there for sure. Yeah, so uh, Cernix with the ace. Runs going up 7-4 here in the second set. At the end of the match, whenever that might be, Cam, there will be an announcement of uh, All-Stars and the MVP. And at this point, we don't know who that might be, but we will get a list and uh, either at the end of this broadcast or as we get into the uh, start of the, the boys men's final we can uh, bring you those all-stars and MVP names and certainly some of the all-stars were handed out earlier as those teams uh, finished because yep. uh, they weren't allowed to uh, to stay and they had to travel home so we'll make sure that we acknowledge all their efforts Invest there with the uh, side out off the block, who uh, she's now back to serve. A little low contact off that uh, toss and into the net. Also, like to give a shout out to uh, the Winnipeg West Athletic Conference for hosting this uh, 4A Girls and Boys Provincials. It started last weekend with the girls regionals being held here at Sturgeon Heights and the boys being hosted over at uh, St. Paul's High School and the convener is the uh, is Ed department here at uh, Sturgeon Heights, uh, Mr. Ryan Vermatt. So uh, not only was he uh, involved in getting his team prepped and playing in the regionals and then in the final four today, but making sure that everything ran smoothly. So uh, thanks to Ryan for his commitment and leadership and to the rest of uh, the people involved in the Winnipeg West Athletic Conference for making this uh, come to life for these student athletes this year. It's a lot of work, that's uh, yeah. that's for sure. I'm sure he'll go reintroduce himself to his family.
Up on the screen now you see uh, an advertisement for True Sport, uh, lives here in Manitoba. True Sport is a uh, concept of how we can bring good sport to all uh, participants across the country. Our seven principles, um, as you see in the screen, are really how we want to bring uh, the sporting experience to our athletes, whether it's at the community level or in our school system. Uh, it's, and it's based on the values of excellence, fun, inclusion, and respect. And uh, those are all important uh, values and things that we can work on to ensure quality sporting experiences. So we have a group here in Manitoba uh, under the leadership of uh, uh, Dr. Glenn Bergeron, who has been front and center in leading the uh, True Sport Lives Here Manitoba group. So a shout out to that group for the work that they're doing in trying to uh, instill the values and principles of true sport in sport organizations and systems across the province. This is a great initiative, and if there's one thing we've seen in being able to have a return to sport in this pandemic is just the importance uh, of of getting back to sport and uh, part of teams and uh, yeah. part of healthy sport experiences, mentorship, and uh, and that is uh, a big part of what uh, it's about. Yeah. Good set there that we've seen uh, a little bit higher set to Pakovic in the middle. And just, a, just a, a final note, not a final note, but just another note about uh, True Sport. We'd like to uh, thank and congratulate the, uh, the board of directors with the Manitoba High School Athletic Association back in, uh, I believe it was their February board meeting of 2021 uh, after a presentation by True Sport Lives Here Manitoba. Uh, the board endorsed the values and the principles for their programs in uh, uh, high school athletics, MHSAA, and uh, they've started by integrating those into uh, their handbook, which is uh, responsibilities of all coaches across the province to be familiar with. And as we move forward, um, you know, integrating more of it into the events and activities that MHSAA is responsible for. So we'd like to thank uh, Chad Falk, the uh, executive Director and Greg Jarvis, the Assistant Executive Director and the Board of Directors for the Manitoba High School Athletic Association for the support of True Sport. 11-8 here in the second set. Nice attack there by Jenna Dick on, uh, from the right side there, passed and then took her uh, a little bit abbreviated, abbreviated approach, but uh, was able to connect on a nice cross-court shot. Back to serve, Jenna Dick for the Broncos. Deep cross-court there by Cisneros to score. Yeah, they're sticking around here. You know, the 9-12, an important serve here right mm -hmm. now, but making plays like that allows them to have a chance and uh, go back and get it done on the service line. Three ball to the Flames, comes back outside to this. She puts the ball away off of hands. Yeah, another nice shot there and uh, chipping away at this score for set win. So they're in a good spot. We know they're not going to give up. They were down by two sets this morning and uh, That's right. battled their way back to win in five. Good pass by the libero there. Durance gets up over top of that one, cuts it inside the middle blocker. Yeah, we've seen she's had some big attacks already in this match, but that was probably the one with the most pace on it. Yeah. And a uh, little bit inside, it was right <laughs> right in the zone she wanted it, you could tell, and yeah. she hit that one a uh, sharp cross. There's a bang, bang, Cineros off of the block and back in her body. I think parents and athletes can also look forward to probably seeing some uh, highlights, uh, photos and uh, write-ups in our local uh, print media. We see some of the uh, photographers here tonight, so we'd like to thank them for coming out and supporting high school athletics. It's always a thrill for our high school student athletes to you know, read about their 
Yeah, it was really part accomplishments in uh, in the paper and maybe see a photo for sure. Yeah, it adds a lot to the uh, high school sport experience and being a student athlete, seeing your team, your school as part of it. Yeah. It is definitely different though without having uh, you know the garbage cans and the uh, <laughs> the wigs yeah. and all the rest of it. Yeah, we can hear each other. Back to serve Megan Cooper back in the game. Great effort there by Jenna Dick, but uh, that's a tough ball running that far, running that hard going away to try and bring it back into the over the net. Yeah, Megan Hooper giving her, her team a chance here. Some nice tough serving. Took a little bit off that one yep. there. And Goes back row to uh, Jenna Dick. She puts that one away off the hands in the back row. Could not be contained. Well, there's just so many things, Cam, that we've noticed over the, the course of the day in the finals that, uh, you know, some of them were came into play before COVID and then certainly a result of COVID, but, uh, you know, we watched the teams warm up and no longer the uh, running back and forth under the net. Uh, you know, that was kind of the, the concussion safety, but certainly we didn't want an interchange of uh, players and teams with the COVID protocols, and now we see referees with... Uh, Mass and uh, hand electronic whistles. So, um, you know, everyone trying to, to do the best things in the best interest of public health. So, yeah, we'd sure. like to thank everybody for their efforts in, in those uh, pieces. There we had Cisneros and, uh, and Tyndall, I believe it was again, yes, making, uh, putting up a, a formidable block and being able to uh, stop some on that outside attack. Back over to Cisneros. Just out cross court. There is some. Uh, I'm very impressed with the aggressiveness of the uh, of the serves cam. And serves Hard and flat. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and the uh, this is the evolution of the game. You know, now we're seeing lots of back row attack on both sides in this game here right now. Mm -hmm. This one goes back row to uh, to Stevens out of the pipe this time. Free ball back. This is Narrows with the pass. Comes out to this. She goes cross court off hands off of Pokovic. So they're hanging in there. 14 17 back on the service line is Lauren Viss. A good aggressive serve yeah. there that drops in just. Uh, just inside the end line in position one. Making it a two point deficit now in the. That makes a big difference. Yeah. Call for two hits there. The old eyeball check from uh, Jenna Dick, but uh, nonetheless, the, the calls were made. Certainly in that rotation, the uh, the game plan seemed to be serving hard cross court. Yeah, and this went after that one too yeah. and uh, just got under it a little bit, sailed out the back, but uh, two point gap now on there and was able to uh, close it a little bit now. So 18-16 yes. for, uh, for the Broncos as they go back to serve. Her first appearance in is now Kaylee Lane in to serve. Good serve coming in off the bench. Well done. Turns with the dig, out to Jenna Dick. Off the hands, this with the dig. She's gonna get the return back, back row set. With the kill. And good exchanges on both sides of the net. We have a one point game, 17 serving 18 here. With Barnes in the lead. And Kathleen coming in and off the bench, like you say, putting in a good, a good solid serve there. Yeah. Not to the easiest thing to do nope. in the provincial final. So good, good for you. Good save there by Jenna Dick with a little bit of a pokey. Sorens with the dig. Gets it on the back row. She goes hard down that 1-2 seam, or 1-6 seam and scores. 
That's really tough to stop because hitting out of that pipe position, you you can spray any which yeah. way, right? And it's it's pretty tough to uh, to know where to set up. You got to hope you're in the right spot, especially with that <laughs> velocity coming yeah. at it too. Back row, this is narrow. She goes cross court. Now a little bit different back yeah. row attack. That yeah. one was out of more of an A position. A lot of teams will call it an A position, basically on the left side of the court, but still coming out of the back row like that. So creative and, uh, mm -hmm. and fun here to bring it within one point. Yeah. Yeah, so credit to the setters. No one's, uh, I think the nerves have been calmed and uh, they're setting their full arsenals right now. Yeah, neither team really came out looking all that nervous either. Maybe, yeah. you know, playing in a little bit smaller venue than a, than a mm -hmm. university and already having played today, but they settle in right away here yeah. into this game for sure. Ball was a little flat for Cineros, but she took it in play. Tough ball for Ella Wood there and Bruns with the point. As they say, all points are important, but it's uh, down 18-21. Yeah, I say Mary's cool. is going to uh, talk about that or talk about that one necessarily, or just mm -hmm. uh, take a little breather and make uh, Bruns think about their serve a bit. Well, it looks like we're heading into uh, Coach Funk's timeout. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and they are. No, I know. Okay. <laughs> Hey, when number when number eight hits left side, ha! Huh, when number eight hits left side, we're gonna move our five back a little bit, so you guys have to be ready for anything kind of rolling or anything like that. Okay? Yeah. Number eight. Yeah, she's not gonna tip, I don't think, but like rolls and stuff, and then one can move. Yeah, and I think that's a that's an advantage for us if, if that happens. Eh? Okay, let's go here, guys. When there's with nobody in in the gym, it's comical because coaches know that you can hear everything. Yes. Like even if you're up in the stands where we are, like yeah. it sounds like they're whispering <laughs> to their teams, and they kind of are a little bit. They are, yeah, 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 yeah. So Coach Funk initially talking to uh, Jillian Pokovic about a little bit of back row defense there, and then uh, you know goes to the rest of the team, and they're talking about how they're going to defend number eight when she gets into that uh, left side. The other channel, we talked to one of the coaches um, you know, earlier in the day, uh, Coach Vermet with uh, Sturgeon Heights. Um, you know, one of the challenges this year, the girls coming off such a long time, is these girls are exhausted at this time of the year. Like, they're just not used to this kind of volume and they're getting these extra matches and the extra intensity. And, you know, so we just hope that everybody comes out uh, injury free and they're able to get a rest and then uh, carry on with their other sports or probably into the the club season once we get started uh, yeah. with training after the new year so yep. that's an important part that i don't think uh, maybe some of these young athletes appreciate or put as much stock in is uh the, the commitment to and the, the strength and endurance training that's involved especially if you're you know like these top 10 players like you're getting a lot of volume in the <laughs> yeah absolutely well, there we saw a call of uh, being over over the net, so the ball, uh, Serenx going over and playing the ball on the St. Mary's side, which gives the ball back to St. Mary's and serving here at 23-19. Uh, yeah, she did a good job there of just, you know, sealing the net, not being too, too aggressive when the ball was tight, and the ends up with St. Mary's with a, a net infraction. So back with uh, this set on the line is uh, Jillian Pokovic serving 24-19. Impressed with Skirmita as uh, she uh, seems to be in the right spot every yeah. time on those attacks. Even attacks that are scoring, it's uh, not by a, not by much. No, she has uh, pretty much touched everything that's uh, come her way and certainly put a lot of them in the right spot for the setter. Good reaction there by Hooper just to put that ball in the air. And uh, nice outside shot there by Rhea Cernick to tie this at uh, one all. So it's going to be at least a best of four now, Cam. Yeah, that's right. I think we're heading towards some uh, highlights again from set two, I believe. Yeah, I think you are right, according to our script. So.
Well, evenly matched, uh, you know, evenly matched uh, competition here at this point, Cam, with uh, St. Mary's winning the first set, 25-21, and then with J.H. Bruns the responding with a 25-19. with the family or date night for two. This holiday season, give the gift of special occasions. Get a free $10 promo card when you buy a $50 gift card from Boston Pizza. Because nobody re-gifts pizza. These students are creating a podcast in the broadcast media studio here at ATC. Students will learn both pre- and post-production, producing and editing their short films, documentaries, newscasts, news stories, and commercials. Students will be equipped with the knowledge, skills, and attitudes to find entry-level employment in the broadcasting industry as general operators, television assistants, camera operators, and editors. They also work on real projects like live streaming championship sporting events. Creating podcasts. Editing projects like this one. And running our radio station. And we're back for the second set. We hope you enjoyed the, uh, the promo video of LRSD TV and the broadcast media course. It's been it's an unbelievable experience over the last five, six years since they instituted the program to be involved. And, you know, what these kids learn in all aspects of the broadcast media course is uh, second to none. So, again, congratulations to the division for the vision with the course and then uh, Ken Plantink for bringing it to life with the students. Starting off uh, this uh, third set there with a sharp cross court attack again. It's pretty tough to defend uh, against her. She's up up really yeah. high, but seeing the block as well because mm -hmm. uh, you know Cisneros uh, and uh, Tyndall have gotten out there and have had a few blocks in that. But she's uh, Syrinx has also shown her ability to see that block and cut around it there. Well, she seems to be uh, you know one of those athletes, and, and probably it's just because she elevates so high, she just kind of seems to hang in there in the air and. You know, so that timing we talked a little earlier about the, the so difficult at the best of times for blockers. Yeah. Um, you know, getting that aerial view with uh, where she is. Elena Stevens back to serve now for the St. Mary's Flames. She's back road to Jenna Dick. Nice in Great system, shot, yeah. nice in system uh, pipe there. She got everything on that one. A little inside out swing because she wasn't completely facing uh, position five, five, but was able to uh, a little bit of a cutback shot. So uh, showing off her skill sets. Good save there by Lauren Viss off the <laughs> referee stand. <laughs> Those are the little plays that make a big difference too, you know, that's yeah. a, a tough situation, a tough play to make, but Viss makes that play to keep it in and yeah. her team ends up in an extended rally and the play continue situation, able to come away with a point. And I'm sure the referees are uh, happy to be on these uh, four point stands and not those old uh, rickety, <laughs> rickety ones the when they get ones? bumped, yeah. They're, uh, yeah. they're a little nervous getting up, let alone getting bumped in the course of a game. Zurich's back to uh, to serve. Up 3-2 here early in the third set. Tied at one each. Yeah. Smart play by Ella Wood in that uh, serve receive. It was tight. She's a back row player, so she knows she can't jump. And the other players came in to uh, uh, help her out as she kind of bounced that one off the net and kept it in play. Yeah. I wasn't sure if they were going to call two hits, though, as a back row player. Well, yeah, fair enough, because she wasn't below the height of the net and did hit it twice. So. Seems like it had to have been one or the other. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Might have just been. And a I think that's maybe what uh, Bruns is yeah. getting some clarification on. Yeah. Lauren Viss trying to make the adjustment. She was uh, a little early and had to 
Hit the ball back behind her. Oh, with putting on some miles here with uh, you know this tough serving and uh, and big attack, she's on the move. There's another good yeah. example of it. Uh, trying to get under the ball to be able to set for her uh, her offense. Good swing there by Jenna Dick to score across court. That's Madeline Gordon on the service line now for Bruns for her second serve this rotation. Free ball coming. Scrimita steps in, takes that. Good job in the middle there by Pokovic to set the block. Now this gets uh, Dick just creeping in for a tip or a roll and then pushes her to the perimeter of the court there and manages to uh, come away with a kill. Lauren Viss now in the back row on the service line. Another free ball. That one into the tape. Four hits. Carolee's lowing back to set, so that'll give her offense three hitters up front. With Pockelbit, Syrinx, and Jenna Dick. Nope, not Syrinx, she's in the back row, sorry. Number nine, that will be Mia Caronte. A bit of congestion at the net there by the Broncos, but they seem to get things sorted out and got their defense back in order. But uh, good swing there by Stevens. Yeah, she swung out nicely there and was able to uh, get a good swing for a point, tie it up, six all. A little long, so score is now 7 6, Broncos. Jenna Dick on the back line. Cernick's back in the front row. St. Mary's with the setter up in the front row here. We'll see where they uh, opt to set this ball. Great pass. Tight out. Stevens makes a good save. Back row to Dick. A Just little a little bit off her, off her ear there. Yeah, she got under underneath that ball a little bit and put it long, but uh, still a good job diversifying that offense and setting the back row attack. Looks like it was off the outside of her hand and didn't get the, the full impact and net serve as a result. Jillian Pokovic back on the service line. She went after Just, that yeah, one. she did. Didn't quite get the tail of the tape. Deadlocked here at eight in the third set of the Varsity Girls 4A Provincial Provincial Boston Pizza Championship coming to you from Sturgeon Heights. There you go. That's, yeah. the, that's the shot, shot that she was looking that's for on right. the last one. Yeah. Came in there really aggressive. Good height of uh, ball on that set and was able to convert for a point. Dig there, back out to Syrinx. Little inside set. Vies does a good job. And just on the net there. Just on the follow through, yeah. yeah. Well, they did a good job, St. Mary's did a good job of slowing down that attack on the outside and transitioning. Mm -hmm. Set might have been a little bit tight that put Vies on the, this on the net, but uh, good job uh, on the block. And then a good response there. This is narrows with a, a nice right side attack mm -hmm. to get the back the ball back. 10-9. So down by a point. Maybe Hooper serve. Welcome back to Syrinx. 
just didn't have it quite uh, sealed and got killed for, kill called for the held ball on yeah. the try she tried to recover it. Yeah, they established that block well. They were in the right zone, but mm -hmm. uh, didn't quite have her hands over it. Penetrating over the net, plane of the net. Oh, good dig there by or save by Ella Wood. Free ball to Bruns. Goes out to Jenna Dick. She goes down the line. Cisneros was there, but. Uh, yeah, that ball right at the antenna. Yeah. The right shot, right off her hands and out. So, smart attacking by number 13, Jenna Dick, for the Broncos. Good dig there by Wood. Scrometta comes in. Oh, nice example yep. of ball control there by Scrometta, who's uh, playing the second ball with uh, the ball coming over her shoulder, <laughs> yeah. setting it up over her head to left side and being able to execute for a point there. Great job by uh, St. Mary's. A little bit short on that one, since Narrows puts it in the net and uh, Bruns goes up by three again, 13-10 here in the third set. Some good body control there by Lauren Viz to keep that ball in play and get a bit of an attack on it. Here she comes again. Oh, cross court, little out, inside out swing. Hockovic with the kill off hands. Yeah, she came in from behind the setter there and kind of snuck up to the net and uh, was able to hit it off the block and out for a point. So we do not have a reigning uh, provincial champion here, Cam, no, with true. the pandemic last year. It was cancelled. And in 2019, it was a uh, double win with the Dakota Varsity Girls and Varsity Boys. So we will have new champions this year. Yeah, Much exciting. to the delight yeah. of either of these teams on the, in the girls' final, and uh, uh, Vincent Massey Trojans varsity boys will be taking on the number one Westgate Wings here in the boys' final, exactly. immediately following the Take conclusion of this final here. Take a yeah. big breath when you step back there. You pull the trigger, right? Right. Tired, it's easy to just like drift, yeah. You know what I mean? Like you really gotta pop yourself up in the air with the floor. It's like this much. You can do it. Okay. 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 Just, you know, some nice subtle, you know, points by uh, both coaches there. Uh, Coach Lawrence is saying, like, breathe, <laughs> you know, yeah. don't get too excited. And then uh, assistant coach Scott Koski is saying, like, this is our eighth set of the day. So the legs will start to get a little fatigued. So for those of you that jump serving, right, you just got to really focus on that little last step, a little pop in you so you're not drifting forward. So yeah. great advice by both coaches there. Yeah, no one wins uh, this set or this match on this next point. So yeah. just to be focused and... Uh, Calling attention to uh, the little details there. We've seen it in a couple of sets today where there looks like it's a pretty big gap in a, in a rally point situation. And then mm -hmm. only to see that spread evaporate in a couple of points. So we'll see how this plays out here. Good dig there. Good heads up there by Jenna Dick knowing where the setter was and uh, blocking her front row. The thing that impresses me, uh, Cisneros, is that she, uh, when she's coming out to, to serve that ball, she, she's serving hard and, uh, and coming out good response there, despite the score. Oh, there's another example. Yeah. There. Okay, Lauren Vista back at the service line hitting that conflict zone, and then there we have 15-13. Yeah, it's exactly. Like a new, a new, uh, a new <laughs> ball game here. Clairvoyant Cam Johnson. Well, <laughs> good lucky. <laughs> We've just seen it over and over yes, today. Yes, yes. Oh. Again, uh, Jillian Pokovic thought she had that spot, uh, and uh, Scrimetta is just, uh, she's been relentless in her uh, efforts on defense there. Yeah, she's, uh, she's very good at, at getting to that spot and recovering there. She had a, a roll out of it. Maybe we'll get that on the highlights, I don't know, or, or just did.
Good swing again down the line by Jenna Dick. Going over top of Ella Wood on that one. Yeah, we haven't seen as many line shots there, so that was uh, that yeah. was nice to see that that attack there on the replay. You can see it uh, hitting three quarter court, but tight to that line. So good execution. Back row to Cisneros. Nice attack there. She kind of hit in between. Now that sea ball and that pipe right. position again, which is uh, giving the blockers a hard time because it's not coming at a zone where they're starting in. So they have to yep. move to that spot. And uh, she found the interval to score there. Nice shot. Making it a one-point game now. Bit of a conversation there by Reyes Ernst and uh, Coach Funk just clarifying uh, uh, defensive responsibilities and uh, positioning with that set coming out of the back row. Just a little extra spin, setter gets called for two hits. Or I believe that was maybe uh, Mia Carante. Who's also, uh, yeah, setting a bit. Outside the antenna, so out of bounds, and Coach Funk is going to call a timeout. St. Mary's now leading 17-16, so. There's that quick shift of yes. uh, momentum and score here. I think we're going to head into the Bruns timeout here right away. Okay, for backward attacks, it's not like a free. Like, I thought in practice we were going like one, two, and then like three, a little higher, but not as drastic as like as like a free ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like right yeah, and especially against her, she's hitting the ball back right here. So beat, like, right here. yeah, we almost got to defend it like a front row. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Like we're going to be like right, like up there, kind of like a front row. Yeah. Okay. So Oh, uh, I'm confused because we and Bernard are Let's just protect the front row hitter. Always, okay? With seams? Yeah, okay. Okay, unless you see something else, okay? Okay, oh, let's go, guys. Let's go. So again, as I observed uh, just a few points ago, the uh, coaching and uh, coaching staff and the players just trying to sort out uh, how they want to uh, defend that back row attack. Gives you a little bit of insight too for those that haven't been in a timeout like mm -hmm. that or, or part of that coach athlete conversations there, you know, a good volleyball IQ all around, yep. coach and athletes co-constructing there, what's well, gonna happen exactly. when they come out, it's, it's, uh, yeah. it's good to see. Took me a long time, Cam, to remember that, uh, you know, the view that the coach has in the sideline is much different to what the players have on the floor. So for, you and know, the coach in the stands, and the parents in the stands. stands. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So for, uh, you know, for Chris and the other coaches who, uh, you know, then give the, it's that uh, co-construction to say, okay, well, what's, a, what's happening out there? Like, what do we need to do? Mm -hmm. You know, they've played enough sets, they can make the adjustments. Yeah. Oh. A little bit of a hiccup there by uh, Cisneros was uh, on the back line out of rotation, but uh, a little nonetheless, smirk, a little yep. smirk and they'll uh, shake it off and oh, get that's the next right. one. <laughs> Great pass by Scrimetta. Just gives you an idea of you know, how high she's getting because that ball was well off the net and uh, how sharply she hit that one in the court. And that's one thing that I've seen today. I haven't seen all season so much, but even the, just the matches and the attacks we've seen today is is her ability to be able to hit a ball that is off the net or mm -hmm. out of system. Often it's a roll shot, at, uh, and she's able to take that step back and still get a really good swing on that ball. Jenna Campbell comes back to five on that one. Scrometta digs it. Jenna Dick, I think you were going uh, old school Jenna Campbell from CGS days there. <laughs> was I? <laughs> I think you did. Uh oh. <laughs> you had the Jenna right though. Yeah. <laughs> well, similar skill sets it, in terms it, of, uh, you yeah. know, a compliment to both, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tough serve coming over there now. So Bruns is up by two points. They've, uh, St. Mary's has shown their ability to battle back though. So far from being done here. Jillian Pockovic back to serve. Setters back row for St. Mary's. 
deep serve, so she'll want to get that uh, adjusted. The last rotation was uh, into the net and then out the back, so. Elena Stevens, Is that serve. Well, that serve just hung up in the air yeah. there. I think passers were expecting it to drop in front and just kept kept drifting to the back. It would have landed in though, so that was a good, uh, definitely a good uh, choice to play that ball on the Bronco side. Whoopsie. Oh. Oh. St. Mary's last a little longer on that yeah. rally than the, than the Broncos side of things, but they'll take it, 21-20. Uh, Lauren Viss with her, her time to smirk that she gets the uh, credit for the kill off of that. Mm -hmm. so we've seen a few cha uh, lead changes here in this third set. So. Yeah, Elena Stevens back to serve, 21-20. Good pass by Pokovic out to Syrinx. She goes down line at a single block. Yeah, that backdoor shot that's about five, six feet off that sideline, but uh, towards the line side, really tough to dig. Back to serve now is uh, Mia Caronte. Yes. Nice to snarls. The uh, block had the, it all wrapped up, but she uh, tipped it over, and there was nobody around on yep. defense there. So that yep. puts St. Mary's up by a point here at the end of the third. Has a good swing off the right side by Syrinx there to tie it up at 22. Earns herself a spot on the service line. Good hustle here by both teams. Free ball back to the Flames. Goes to the middle. Good transition volleyball on yes. the St. Mary's side of things. They, uh, yep. just, that attack was uh, well executed, obviously, but the one, the run prior, they had a 51 going in the middle and in the right side coming in fast on the 62 as well. So really great in-system uh, attack offense there. Deep to the corner. Yep, man. Tough to defend those ones. Yeah, she found the outside of the line there. Right? Yep. 23-23, so we have something on the floor that we are going to take care of with a, a broom just to make sure that uh, there's no slippage for these players. Sometimes when the ball hits the ceiling, we've got a little bit of uh, yep. substance coming off. I'm not sure what we're going to call that, Tam, but uh, nonetheless, it's something that could provide... Uh, that makes it slippery on the court. So yes. Lines people here, other duties as assigned. There we go. Madeline Gordon back to serve. Back row to Cisneros. Well read there by the front row of uh, Bruns. That's Pockabuck and Jenna Dick with the block. Possible set point here. And Another lead Coach change. Lawrence. Yes, Coach Lawrence with the timeout. Right, and you're there. Like who's here? Your front row. Yeah. Right, so, okay, just think about it, right? We need the ball back right now. Okay, okay, you gotta find the block, right? Okay, okay, need the ball back, right? Okay. You're still in the front row, Lauren's still in the front row? Okay, you still got Lauren? 
Okay. All right. Okay. One pass. Okay, one pass. Good set. Let's get a kill. We get the ball back. Okay. Okay. All right, one pass, one pass, one pass. Ready? Timeout music, a little clapping by cheering by the girls on the benches. So, yeah, here we go. A little excitement 24 serving 23. We've got Madeline Gordon on the service line for the Broncos. Possible set match, set point. Scometta with the dig. Comes back row to Stevens. Jenna Dick off the net. This is Naros unable to contain it. Runs goes up 2-1 here in the Boston Pizza 4A Girls Provincial Volleyball Finals. Another line shot there like I was saying earlier. We hadn't seen a lot of them, but uh, that one for game point scores to put uh, the Broncos up 2-1. Yep. Again, here comes your highlight package. Pizza, the perfect place for a drink, or the new pickle pizza. Across from this guy, who's getting his fill of some classic cactus cut nachos. Next to some hockey fans that just saw a nasty OT winner. Boston Pizza, enjoy some, what? Look at that guy. Just having a soak, eh? Eh, you do you. Enjoy some old fall favorites and some new ones, however you like, at Boston Pizza. All right, we're back here at Sturgeon Heights, bringing you live streaming on LRSD TV, the Manitoba High School Athletic Association, Boston Pizza 4A Girls Varsity Championships. It is two sets to one for the J.H. Bruns Broncos, coming in ranked number four over the St. Mary's Academies, ranked number six. Cam, your thoughts so far? Well, it's been a good, a good match. Uh, not surprising that it's been close, and we've talked about those... Uh, uh, the swings in, in who has the lead, you know, four or five points uh, has not been a very big obstacle to overcome for teams today, no. you know, and we saw that in the last the last set. Bruns ended up winning, but uh, had to had bigger gaps that uh, St. Mary's came back. Uh, that any point that's being scored right now, it's not really typically off errors. No. Uh, you know, the liberals on both sides are playing really well. Setters are putting their their attackers in a position to uh, to be successful here. So both teams are having to earn their earn their points. Yes. Yeah. Certainly, we've seen some uh, miss serves, but they're uh, they're aggressive. They're just you know the. Yeah. The other side of that half inch, and uh, and that's part of the game now yeah. too. There was a time when you know the, the miss serve was the yep. was something yeah. you wanted to avoid, and now the tough serving has become a mandatory part of the game. Jenna Dick back to serve. Ava Scrometta with the uh, the pass, and there you go. And that's why when you have uh, liberos like Scrometta, for example, yep. who are going to be able to pass up a pretty perfect pass on, mm -hmm. a, on a less than aggressive serve. Uh, you got to go after it, and that's how you get opportunities like that. Another ball tight to the net for Ella Wood. Forced her into the net, so... Yeah, so Aggressive serving by the Broncos to start this fourth set. Yeah, yeah and you see that that is the impact of it. You know, yeah. you have to uh, put t at this point in the finals, you have teams who are, are polished and are really good attacking teams. You want to get them out of system, hitting their second and third shots. Yeah. 
little tight to the net, but uh, aggressive push tip there by Cernix. And a quick 3-0 start for the Broncos. Again, uh, very aggressive serving here by Benedict coming off the uh, start of the set. Free ball for Owen. Paco puts it in play. That was a little back over her shoulder there, so she was able to keep it in play. Meadow with the dig. Ella Wood comes back out here to Cisneros. Well, we see another attack there by Syrinx to put her team up 4 nothing. Block just unable to, to seal the, the two-person block there, and she hit the seam between the hands. Ball serving tag between uh, yeah. Jenna Dick and Cernix in the front row, so they have a little chuckle at. They'll get reset and uh, get ready to service you and go on attack here. But a good start for the Broncos coming out here in the fourth set. So I know that St. Mary's has uh, has been successful in in this match before a number of times, 2016, 2015, 2011. Um, but I don't know if, I, I don't want to make it awkward here, but I feel like you might have been around just a bit longer than me to be able to give the historical context uh, <laughs> as to when uh, has J.H. Bruns, I don't believe, has, has been in this. Uh, well, in not in my tenure when I was with the division. So, uh, you know, credit to these girls and, uh, and, and Chris Funk, the, the head coach, for uh, getting to this point. So, uh, you know, big occasion for the girls and J.H. Bruns Athletic for sure. You know, we hope that the uh, the JV girls and the grade nine girls and the girls in grade eight and their families and schools are all watching and inspired by this performance and, uh, you know, want to be able to put on a, a Bronco jersey here in the very near future. Yeah. And that's what part of this is about, right, is, uh, you know, seeing yourself if you're not at this level yet, but seeing yourself in the future of uh, being in this position, whether it's in a provincial final or, or enjoying the, you know, the benefits of uh, high school athletics. Well, and on the other side of it, that's where these players on St. Mary's would have, would have, I'm sure, seen or heard about past uh, teams that have brought home banners. And oh, absolutely. And here it is, their time on <laughs> yeah. here, and they're showing what they can do. Yeah. So an early time out here, down 7-2 early in the fourth. Yeah, fourth set. Fourth set, yeah. Bruns has come out, uh, and the difference really in this set has been the serving. Yes. So I think we're going to venture into the St. Mary's timeout okay. here again, I believe. One point at a time. That's the way you battle back. One point at a time. You're not going to get five points in a row. It's got to be one point at a time. All right? Doesn't have to be a perfect pass on a tough serve. Just got to get the ball up so we can do something with it. All right? So you got to get behind the ball, pass it up. All right? And that girl swinging hard. There's no doubt about that. Someone's got to get up in her face. Are you in the front row? Okay. All right? Get the block in there, and that's it. Okay? All right? If we can serve, if we get the ball back, we're gonna we'll serve at her, right? So she has to pass the first ball. All right. Okay. Come on now, let's go. Okay. Okay. Bring the intensity up. Bring the intensity up a bit. Okay. Three, two, one. Point at a time. Let's go. So certainly acknowledging that uh, Bruns is serving uh, aggressively, and you know, obviously there's uh, an urgency for a good pass, but uh, Coach Lawrence also indicating it doesn't have to be perfect. We just need to get it up so that the setter Ella Wood can have a chance to uh, set some of their offense, and then when they do get the ball back, they're going to go after uh, on serve uh, Rhea Cernix. So uh, again, calm demeanor, right? Can't get. Uh, You know, as you said earlier, Cam, and as uh, Coach Lawrence said, you know, it's it's one point at a time. We're not going to get five back in one play, so it's, a it's tough early yet. It's tough when you're a coach <laughs> sitting on this, on the, and you see, and then the players too. You know, we, that, yeah, you just need to get this ball up, but yeah. it's coming over with such velocity yeah. and uh, putting them in trouble. And that's the one. So uh, Ava Scramita, you know, nice pass, good good swing outside. Yep. Eight three can quickly become eight four, and uh, we'll get back on that storyline of uh, you know closing the gap and and who knows what could happen, especially early in a set like this too. 
And that's that set or that pass uh, from Scamato was you know tight, but uh, you know Wood did a good job of uh, getting to that spot, squaring her feet off, and uh, you know setting the ball out to to this. Gina Dick uh, responds with another back row attack there to get the ball back on the Broncos side. Corante back to serve. Tough ball to set yeah. running into it, knowing she wants to give it uh, to Cisnero on the back set there and uh, put it a little bit tighter than. Uh, yeah, going Cisnero to either pin either. would have been a tough set off of the, just the way she had to move to get that ball. Yeah. Big swing there by Lauren Viss. Yeah, Lauren did a good job there, the swinging outside and getting wide. That ball was at the antenna and she uh, used the block to her advantage there. And yeah. St. Mary's will look to close the gap here by a couple. Well played by Lauren Viz, got her foot to the sideline, you know, kept the ball in vision and then knew it was going to drop outside her and she didn't need to play it, so. Those, those can be a little sneaky here. St. Mary's uh, turn now to here, put some uh, tough serving in. Yep. And in that time out there, uh, by uh, Coach Lawrence talking about we get the ball back, we're going to serve at her. I'm, I'm guessing they're talking about serving at sure. and yeah. uh, making her life difficult to uh, have to pass and, it, and swing out, and uh, that's what we saw. Yeah. Good pass there by Jenna Dick. She goes deep cross court, and Cisneros can't handle it. That would have been a uh, U of M dig. Yes, it would have been. Yeah. She's in the right spot. Just a little bit, a little bit too much velocity here. Nice pass by Cisneros. Runs the middle. A great job there by Madeline, or sorry, number six, that's uh, Taya Tyndall. Yeah, and if they can get more of that kind yes. of offense and, re and make the middles have to hang around like that, and uh, that, that will uh, bode well for them for sure. Anytime you have your middles running faster like that, it opens up across the net. Yeah. Yep. Cool. You know, a couple of exchanges, and at one point in the timeout, I think it was 8-1, and now... Uh, well, they have been able to close the gap, yeah, for sure. So, yes, St. Mary's will be thinking 8-11 looks a lot better than what we were at. Bronte with the floor attack. Serenx with a good dig, and she's going to get the return sea ball. Make short work of that. We see on the replay there that ball point three quarters court with good velocity. Pretty tough to defend against. Well, that set was uh, pushed past the antenna, but uh, Jenna did a good job there to uh, cut that ball back and bring the ball back to the Broncos side. Madeline Gordon with the serve. This with the dig. Out here to Stevens. Carante with the set. Big block yep. outside. Tyndall and Wood on the double block there. You never know what's going to be that play that just sparks your team, right? It doesn't. It can be a, a dig. It can be a block. Yeah, we were, I was I was talking to uh, one of the other coaches there about just that, how blocks can be huge momentum swings. When you when a play like that, you know it's a good play, but the other yeah. person didn't execute the pass. Even an attack, you know, has all this movement to it, but a block is you've, you've really taken an opportunity from the other team and you've directly scored a yeah. point. You know, yeah. it was a good point that was we were talking about because it uh, it can be a huge huge momentum swing type of play and now we see the uh, that lead being uh, reduced further here only a two-point lead now and uh, st. Mary's is going to look to keep cutting that uh, to a, even a smaller amount good second ball there by uh, Mia Carante as uh, 
Lowen was tied up in the first contact and couldn't play it. And Sorens puts the ball away. But now we're seeing both teams again putting the other team on pre under pressure off the serve receive. So. Good second effort there. Yep. Didn't quite get the, the result they wanted, but Wood was, uh, had, did a good job handling a tough ball on that second ball and then was hit the floor to, to give her team a chance there on the, on the one that eventually did end up scoring for the Broncos. Stevens. Cisneros with the back row. That's that A ball again. Yep. Uh, Cisneros uh, working her way around the back row and hitting out of the left side in the back row. She's a different angle that uh, mm -hmm. you know, in defense you really don't see that much. So it's, uh, she's been successful on at least two occasions here in that, that attack. St. Mary's with three attackers up front with Ella Wood, the setter at the service line. Great dig by Ava Scrimita. Well, and uh, there you go. Sterling's answered back with one of her own yeah. A ball. So both teams running out of the back row on the left side there for, uh, for well-executed points. We'll see where Wood decides to uh, throw the ball on this particular play to see if you can reduce it to a three-point. Two hits. Well, she ended up just taking the first ball. Yeah. <laughs> That was a good serve, but... Uh, and some might be asking while well, she went to block, but when she made that first contact, the ball was below the height of the net, so it was actually uh, two contacts. That was just straight up over top of both of the yeah, double block. She was, she was, from the moment <laughs> it hit, uh, hit, hit her hand there uh, on the serve, she Sarings was waiting outside of the court. Uh, yeah. She knew it was coming to her. Hawk of it back on the service line. Good swing there by Cisneros out of the middle. A little bit different attack there. Sirk turns that one down the line over top. A good, good choice by Scrimeda as a libero there. She uh, was thinking, I think, about setting the left side but realized she was ahead of the attack line and so set it over uh, which was a smart move otherwise she would lose that point directly stevens with the second ball scramita with the free ball just very impressed with the uh the effort of uh, well, all the players, but Ava Stramidin as a libero yeah. for St. Mary's has been uh, you know, putting on a show out here. Yeah, leading the defensive charge there. They are going to continue just to set that, right? And back over to St. Right. Mary's So for when the we time. have the ball on our side, we got to find a way to kill the ball, get the ball back. Okay? All right. We can't just give a free ball back over to them because all they're going to do is keep setting her on the left side there. Okay, she's a big swing, she's a good jumper, right? Good touch. All you know, you've got some space. All you got to do is slow it down. Right? Don't have to stop it. Just got to close the block. Put your hands up and slow it down. Okay? All right? Yeah. What do you got to look Okay. You got to go away. Okay. All right. One point. Okay. Hey, one, one point. One point at time. One point at time. Yeah. Good time out there again yep. uh, that we hear from them and uh, the reminders, right, that uh, it's just about touching and slowing that ball down, but the importance as well, not playing tentatively and, and just staying alive and just putting it over the net, the importance of having to hit that ball hard and, uh, and, and put them in trouble. They're, they got to put the Broncos in a position where they're not hitting their first shot with comfort. Great dig. Tape measure shot as you just kept it under the uh, the curtain there just to keep it in play. Yeah, nice dig and uh, didn't quite execute on the attack, but they're not uh, rolling over here at all. No. Nope. Broncos continue to serve tough. 
Akovic going back there and uh, serving with a lot of confidence right now. That's the one they were looking for. Is that's a good, a great, uh, great sequence for Vis yep. outside. That was the previous attack might have been one of the hardest ones she's had tonight, and then uh, had the opportunity to get the final kill shot there off the block. So great play there by Vis. That was a good bounce back session for serving for Pakovic because she had missed a couple back to back. Yeah, yeah. And and she's responded well with uh, the service line now. And we see Lowen going under the net, uh, her foot crossing the center line. So that's a call down and a point for St. Mary's. Five point gap there now. Kick with the back row. That was Megan Hooper with the dig. Ferrante with the dig. Goes back row to Dick. I think that found the line. Yes, I, it yep. did. Yes, it did. The old coffin corner, as they say, you could put a face gloss down in the. It was gonna hit it, pretty tough to defend. Mia Carante back to serve. Good swing by Lauren Viss, she's, uh, yeah, she's getting some good looks on the outside now. Yeah, Cam. she's had some good sequences here in these last uh, few points. You can see on the replay here, off the block and down on the floor. So. She's giving her team a chance. Yep. And it'll be important for them to put in a tough serve here and close this gap before we get too high into the 20s. Good pass by Pokovic. She just keeps, you know, elevating. No one on the floor seems to be showing any signs of uh, fatigue at this point, which... No, there's time for fatigue later. Yes, that's right. Once they the can sleep in tomorrow morning. Once the banner's been handed out, we'll do the fatigue thing. On behalf of all the girls, moms and dads listening, the girls can sleep in tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Rhea back on the service line, serving 23-16 here in the third set. Tied at one each. Had a peek over the top of the net and decided it wasn't going to go. Well, now's the time for St. Mary's here. Not much more uh, time on the clock left for them. So 23-17, no. but stranger things have happened here. That's so right. we'll, uh, Viss will come back here and uh, see if she can put him in trouble. Well, and it's a great serve, too. You know, the old fishing analogy, they run out as much line as they can. Now they just got to try and reel them back in. Yeah. And that attempt in the middle goes off to the side, so. Bruns will be serving for a possible uh, match here. Madeline Gordon on the service line. Cross court shot taken there by Cerny. That's a tough one that uh, Fox was able to play it over the net. Stevens with the, he's gonna go back over to Surix. Seventeen Broncos win. Congratulations to the J.H. Bruns Broncos and Coach Funk and his assistant coaches and the girls. As far as our records show, that may be, uh, be the, the first four A yeah. varsity girl provincial championship. So congratulations. That's uh, very exciting for the f program over at J.H. Bruns. We will have. Uh, the awards presentations here, so thank you again to uh, the officials and the minor officials. And we have some highlights uh, as we watch the last uh, points of that set. Congratulate both teams on an exciting performance. We 
The uh, MHS the boy would like to thank Boston Pizza for the tremendous support of this championship. They would also like to recognize the following corporate partners for sponsoring the championship awards. The Dairy Farmers of Manitoba, Manitoba's Credit Unions, and Manitoba Hydro. To begin the award ceremony, we would like to recognize this year's Player's Choice Award, which is selected by athletes participating in this championship. This year, the players have chosen Kaya Duick from Vincent Massey, Winnipeg. And now this year's All-Star team. First All-Star from Sturgeon Heights Collegiate, Olivia Dow. Second All-Star from Vincent Massey, Winnipeg, Sarah McLamont. Third All-Star from St. Mary's Academy, number 17, Katja Cisneros. Fourth All-Star from St. Mary's Academy, number 23, Ava Scromita. Fifth All-Star from J.H. Bruns, number nine, Mia Carante. Sixth All-Star from J.H. Bruns, number 13, Jenna Dick. And this year's most valuable player from J.H. Bruns, number 25, Rhea Surinx. And now let's congratulate tonight's teams with the captains of the St. Mary's Academy Flames come up to accept their MHSAA finalist banner. We would now like to ask the following players to please come up and accept their silver medals. Number 17, Katja Cisneros. Num number 10, uh, Samantha Drigger. Number 19, num number 19, Julia Ethans. Number two, Ariana Fulcher. Number 14, Kennedy Green. Number 20, Megan Hooper. Number 15, Tess McCurdy. Number 11, Shelby Mead. Number 18, Bivanka Sandhu. Number 23, Ava Scromita. Number, number 12, Alina Stevens. Number six, Taya Tyndall. Number eight, Lauren Viss. And number nine, Ellie Wood. Assistant coach, Mr. Scott Kosky. And head coach, Mr. Marshall Lawrence. Congratulations, St. Mary's. Now, if we would like to ask the captains of the J.H. Bruns Broncos to come up and accept the championship banner in MHS AA Trophy. We would now like to ask the following players to please come up and accept their championship t-shirts and medals. Number nine, Mia Carante. Yeah. 
Number 13, Jenna Dick. Number six, Maddie Gordon. Number 16, Callie Lane. Number 17, Carolise Lowen. Number 24, Julian Povkovic. Number 25, Rhea Surings. Number three, Brianna Thiessen. And number 19, Kate Pekovic. <laughs> Assistant coaches, Kyra Dick. <laughs> Assistant coach, Summer Sabaran. Assistant coach, Ali Moffitt. And head, and head coach, Mr. Chris Funk. Congrat Congratulations, J.H. Bruns. Congratulations, ladies, on a wonderful Chris, season. A Chris, a Stay tuned for the men's. There we have it, Chris. We have a little bit of uh, history tonight with uh, you know, these teams surviving uh, COVID coming back and being able to play a full season, but even more so, and to the credit of uh, J.H. Bruns, I be we believe, uh, correct us if it's wrong somewhere, but uh, we believe it's their first ever 4A Girls Provincial Championship. So congratulations, very exciting for the girls and the, uh, and the program, for yeah, sure. Absolutely, congratulations to the J.H. Uh, Bruns Broncos and, uh, and great job as well to uh, St. Mary's, who uh, both teams played really well today. Great, we saw great serving, oh. some big attacks. Uh, some good defensive plays, so uh, a great 2021-2022 uh, uh, volleyball final. And uh, again, congratulations to the All-Stars, and they are Sarah McClimmick from Vincent Massey in Winnipeg here, from Sturgeon Heights, Olivia Dow from St. Mary's, Katja Cisneros from St. Mary's, Avis Romita from uh, Jage Bruns, Mia Carante also from Bruns, Jenna Dick, and the MVP of this year's Boston Pizza 4A Provincial Girls Volleyball Championships, number 25 from J.H. Bruns, Rhea Suring. So congratulations, and uh, we wish them all the very best in their next adventures of uh, uh, whatever it may be in athletics, and uh, we look forward to bringing to you after we take a little bit of a break here, folks, and we hope you join us back on here on LRSD TV. We have the number four, or pardon me, the number one uh, Westgate Wings taking on, I believe it's uh, number seven, the Vincent Massey Trojans. So uh, we're going to have 20 minutes up on the, uh, the warm-up clock. So uh, if you need something, if you're a little hungry, dial up Boston Pizza, our favorite sponsor here with the MHSAA. Have something brought over to uh, carry you over through the finals of this uh, 4A Boys Provincial Championship. We'll see you soon here, folks.